Hi there guys, got a video here for you today on the AGT Eurogan 2 and in this one what we're going to be doing is a full disassembly of the rifle. This one's just going to be covering the disassembly of the rifle. I want to have a poke around inside and see if we can get rid of that annoying ping and that will obviously be covered in future videos. With that all said we can begin the disassembly. The first thing we'll do is remove the stock and that's done by using a 2.5mm allen key in this back screw here. Same on the other side. And we can flip the rifle on its end and loosen this screw in the bottom here. That's done using a 5mm Allen key. With the stock off we can put that to one side. Next up we're going to degas the rifle. And that's done by removing the extended pick rail. To do that all we need to do is loosen these two screws here with a 4mm Allen key. Once they're loose, we can pull the bottle cover off and stick that to one side. And then in the Picatinny rail here in the bottom, we have a bleed screw, this one here. So we're going to loosen that using a 2.5mm Allen key. As soon as you unscrew the grub screw, a little air should start hissing out. And once it's stopped, we can check that there's no air left inside the plenum by dry firing the rifle in a safe direction. After just a few dry fires, the regulator let go and the rest of the air from the plenum escaped. Now when we cock and fire the rifle, we just get the dead sound of the rifle. No more air is escaping out the barrel, so we know that the plenum is fully discharged. Next thing we can do is remove the bottle, nice and simply by unscrewing it, like so. There is an o-ring on the base of the bottle as well, so just be careful that doesn't get lost. We can also unscrew the shroud and set that to a safe position. Next up we'll remove the regulator from the rifle and to do that what we're going to do is tip the rifle on its end, locate this cap here and using a set of snap ring pliers place the pins in the holes and then gently twist counterclockwise obviously to remove the cap. Yeah, the cap comes there, it does have an o-ring on the end of it so just be careful it doesn't get lost. And there we see the regulator in the end there. To remove it from the body of the gun we're just going to use some needle nose pliers Grip the end of the regulator nice and firmly and gently pull it out. So there's the regulator. This is obviously a sub 12 foot pound rifle. I don't know if you'll be able to read the pen mark there, but it says 90 bar. So this one is obviously set to 90 bar. There we have it there. We'll further disassemble the regulator in a minute. Now though, I'll just give you a quick look in the end of the rifle there. You can see it's just a hole where the regulator goes. We've removed the bottle from the end there. The gauge can now be unscrewed. It could have been unscrewed earlier, but we can remove the gauge. It's done by just simply using an adjustable spanner. Get it on the sides of the gauge nice and firmly. Then twist him. Then remove him by hand. There we have it there. It does have an O-ring on the base of it there, so just be careful that it doesn't get lost. Next up we'll bring back the regulator and fully disassemble the regulator. I've got the regulator here and the first thing we're going to remove is the piston from the bottom. To do that we're just going to use a set of snap ring pliers in the base there and remove the snap ring. Put that to one side. Then using an M4 bolt, we're just going to screw that into the base of the piston. Then gently pull it out. There it is there. There's the regulator piston with the Bellevilles and the two O-rings on top of it. See the top of the piston there is a peak top to the piston and the regulator itself is nice and clean. The next thing we'll do is remove the adjuster screw. So it does have an alignment mark. If you look on the side there, it's got a pen mark so you can see exactly where your regulator is set from the factory. And as we said before, this one was set to 90 bar, although the pen is rubbing off where I've been handling the regulator. Before we take the adjuster screw out, I'm just going to take a very quick measurement from the 
top face here to the top of the adjuster screw. And that on my rifle is about 27.3 millimeters. So about 27.3. That'll just get us in the ballpark when we go to rebuild the regulator. So first thing we'll do, get a 17mm spanner and put it across the flats in the regulator body. And then using a 10mm spanner, we'll loosen the lock nut. And then by using a 4mm Allen key, we can just remove the adjuster screw from the body itself. Here we have it there. So there's the adjuster screw for the regulator and that's the regulator fully disassembled. There we have it there. So we'll stick all of this over to the side out the way. Next up we'll remove the top rail so that's done by removing these two screws here using a three millimeter allen key. Next up we'll take the top rail off then by using a Torx T20 bit, we can remove the side plate and the cocking arm. Once that's done, we can use a 2mm Allen key in this back hole here, remove the locking grub screw and then the cocking arm pin. So there the two parts are. With those two pieces out, we can remove the cocking arm from the side of the rifle, being careful not to lose any of the little bits. There's a screw in the front there, and then in the side here, it's also a little spacer ring, or there was on my rifle. With that done, we can remove all the screws that hold on this top plastic cover piece on, and that's done by using a T10 Torx bit. With all the screws removed, we can pop this plastic piece off. That exposes the cock and linkage. Next, we'll remove the barrel from the rifle. So if you look on the top here, we've got a number of grub screws that hold the barrel into the two blocks of the rifle. And we're just going to be undoing them using a three millimeter Allen key. These don't need to come all the way out. We just need to undo them a few turns. Once they're done out a few turns, we can pull the barrel out. And there we have it there. Very nice barrel. CZ barrel, as we said in the overview, it does have these flats on it, which correspond with the grub screw holes, as you can see that there. Quite a nicely finished barrel. Nice crown on it. I don't know if you can see it there. But very nice indeed. We'll, we'll stick the barrel to one side. When you remove the barrel, just be careful that this little row ring here doesn't get lost. So we'll put that to one side. Once the barrel's been removed, we can take a couple measurements from the rifle. First thing we're going to measure is this distance here. So the distance from the back edge of this cock and block to the front edge of this little black piece in the back here. So here. And that on this rifle is 31 centimeters, pretty much exactly. The next thing we're going to measure is the distance between these two blocks here. And that on this rifle is just over 12, 12 centimetres. So that's the distance between these two edges here and these two edges here. All that'll do is just make it easier for us when we go to reassemble the rifle as we'll be able to get everything nice and close without having to make any adjustments to the linkages. Once we have those measurements we can remove this grub screw at the front here. That's done using a 2mm allen key. And then push the rail back slightly and remove the front block from the housing. Next up we'll flip the rifle on its end and we're going to be loosening this little grub screw in the top here. That's done by using a 2.5mm allen key, getting in the back there, just cracking it loose. This is only a locking grub screw so it doesn't need to be removed entirely, but once that's loose we can unscrew the cocking linkage and that's the rod nice and floating. With that done we'll upend the rifle 
and remove this screw here using a 4mm allen key and then by using a T20 Torx bit we'll get in there and loosen the screw in the bottom once that's out just use some tweezers to remove the screw from the back Next up we can remove the rod entirely, if we pick up the rifle and sort of gently just sort of bend the two halves of the rifle down, you're not trying to bend anything, you're just trying to take the play out of it. Once the play has been taken out, you can just slide up the rod nice and simply. And then we'll remove this little piece from the back, that's the piece we unscrewed earlier. With that done, we'll flip the rifle over and turn our attention to the trigger linkage. Trigger linkage is nice and easy to remove. What we need to do is take a flat bladed screwdriver, put it between the this split pin here, just gently tease the two pieces apart and lift the linkage up. Once it's up, we can simply rotate it to the side and then if we rotate the block round like so, we can then pull the trigger linkage out. So nice and easy to remove that. With that done, we can separate the two halves of the block. So just simply unscrewing. That's the front half there. Then we can just remove the plenum from the back half. Now we have the two halves of the block separated. And for anyone interested, this is the plenum, and I believe this is what's causing us the ring as we fire the rifle. So we're going to have a look at making a deep hanger that fits in there, or maybe blocking it off with some Delrin, something similar, but that will be coming in another video. For now though, we'll continue to disassembly, so we're going to do the front block first. So there's really not that much to remove from the front block, so we'll go through it nice and quickly. First thing we'll do is remove the safety. That's done by using a T10 Torx bit in the screw on the side there. Removing one side, and then once you've removed one side, the other side will just fall out the back. Just be careful as you take it off though, it does have this little spacer ring in the back, so just be careful that doesn't get lost. Next up we'll take the trigger guard off. And again, using a T10 Torx bit, we'll just loosen these two screws here. And then we can pull this piece off. Next we'll remove the trigger unit. Now again, T10 Torx bit in the base here. Move this screw. With that screw removed, we can rock the rifle over to one side and then remove the two red Allen screws, one from either side. And then the trigger unit can be pulled out, like so. Rather simple unit. This spring here is your safety latch, so that provides the detent as you push forward and back on the safety. You could disassemble it further if we wanted to. If we took this screw out, we'd be able to remove this spring. I'm not going to be doing that for the sake of this video, but we can push this pin out. And with the pin removed, we can then remove the trigger blade. So there we see it there. It's a plastic trigger blade on this rifle. But we'll put that back for now. Right then, with that all done, the front block is pretty much fully disassembled. The only two things that we're not going to be taking off of this rifle are this back piece here. This is fairly tight from the factory and I don't want to risk damaging the block to get it off, so we're going to be leaving it installed. If you did need to take it off for any reason, there are two sets of flats, one here and one here. Both take a 27mm spanner. So if you did need to remove that, you'd just need to use a 27mm spanner across them flats. The other thing is the one-way valve in the fill port. So in there is a little screw with an O-ring underneath it. If you needed to get that out for any reason, you just use a T10 Torx bit on the screw and remove it. The last thing in the bottom here is the screw with the ball bearing beneath it. And this is obviously the bleed screw for the rifle. So by using a 2.5mm allen key, we can remove the screw and the ball bearing. Hopefully you can see that just in the base there. Although 
we don't need to remove that so we're just going to put the allen key back in and with that said that's pretty much the front block fully disassembled so we'll get this put to one side and we'll bring back the rear block now that we've got the back block over we can start disassembly first thing we'll remove is this little spring steel piece here that's done by using a 10 t10 torx bit in the screw in the side just removing that that allows this piece to be removed so this is just a piece of sprung steel which acts as a spring for this ball bearing here with that off we come in the side here we can just push out the ball bearing like so there's the ball bearing with that done we'll remove the pellet probe so if we come from this side just move this arm back a little bit to expose the screw in the side of the pellet probe this one here by using a two millimeter allen key we can just loosen this grub screw move it from the side and then the pellet probe can be pushed out the back like so next up we're going to remove the trigger assembly and to do that first thing we need to do is remove these five screws here to remove the cover plates off and that's done using a t10 torx bit With the covers off we can now remove the little cocking dog piece in the side of the hammer like so and then we can remove the trigger unit all as one piece from below again using a t10 torx bit those two screws loose and gently pull the trigger unit up so here we see the trigger unit here and I'll just give you a brief example of how exactly it works. So as we cock the rifle we pull this arm back and that allows the top sear to jump over the bottom sear and be latched on it. Also obviously pulls the hammer back and allows the sear to latch onto it. When we pull the trigger it pushes this part forward and allows the bottom sear to drop down which in turn allows the top sear to drop down and the hammer to fly forward. So I'll just give you another example of that. You can see there a very simple trigger indeed. Someone did ask me about the second stage adjustment and what I did to remove the creep on the second stage. That's quite simple. All I did was loosen this screw here using a 1.5mm Allen key. And then by going in the top here and adjusting this scrub screw, you can adjust the sear engagement to get a nicer second stage. So the more you do it out, the more sear engagement you get so the creepier the trigger will be in effect so you see that there we can move the trigger quite a lot without it actually letting go and the more we do that in the less sear engagement so the sort of less creep you have so we'll just do that in a little more so there we have it there that's how i adjusted the trigger to get it nicer on the second stage There we have it. Next up we'll remove the hammer and the hammer spring assembly. So we'll come in the bottom here, loosen this grub screw. We'll remove it as well. After that we can remove the hammer spring adjuster using a 5mm Allen key. Next we can just tip the hammer and hammer spring assembly out. But there's the hammer and the hammer spring for this rifle. It's a fairly light hammer and a fairly stiff hammer spring so this is obviously the sub 12 foot pounds setup i wouldn't be surprised if the setup was slightly different from the longer barrels but this is obviously a short barrel so this is all i can show you but we'll stick that to one side and next up we can remove the last parts of the rifle first thing we'll do is remove this little cover plate here that's done using a four millimeter allen key it is an o-ring beneath this so just be careful as you take it out the next thing we'll do is remove this boss here we're going to be doing that by using a 27 mil spanner getting it on the sides there and cracking it loose here we have it there we'll stick that to one side next we'll remove the valve and the valve spring it's done by using a five millimeter allen key 
in the back here and just removing this screw. There we have it, there's the valve and that's the block pretty much fully disassembled. The only other thing we could take out if we wanted to was the little magazine detent here but we're going to just be leaving that in for the purposes of this video. So I'll just give you a close-up look of the valve and the valve spring. Bring the valve spring out just simply by using a small allen key. But there we have the components there. This is just a housing as far as I can see. And then we have the valve and the valve spring in my hand now. So the valve spring does have a Delrin guide over it. I believe this is probably to try and cut down on some of the ping. Fairly common valve, just a ceiling, or this is the ceiling face on this side. The only unusual thing is that the back half of the valve is sealed off. So when this is in the rifle, the back half of the valve sits in the hole there and obviously goes backwards and forwards as the valve gets hit by the hammer. But there we have it there. That's pretty much the rifle fully disassembled. Right then, so that's the Eurogan 2 fully disassembled. I'm really quite impressed with the little Eurogan 2. It's quite surprised me. It's obviously a premium rifle, but you do really do get what you pay for. The inside of it's finished absolutely beautifully. All the components look well made and robust. There's no sort of real disappointing parts. Everything's obviously made to a very high standard. and I'm quite impressed with the rifle overall. We're going to be doing a little bit of work to it, but probably nothing that involved. The actual rifle itself is working quite nicely. We're getting a fairly good shot count out of it. The only thing that we do have to sort out, obviously, is the ping. But I believe just a simple de-pinging device in the planum here will solve most of our problems. With that all being said, I'm going to be get started on doing the little bits and pieces that I want to with the rifle. And you'll be seeing those in a separate video. But for now, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.